Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's word to you today. Praise God. Are you ready to be blessed today? I'm ready. Because you know what? As the Holy Spirit is bringing it to me and I'm giving it to you, I'm being watered also. Praise God. Are you ready to call forth your daily bread? Say this with me. Say, Father, I believe and I receive my daily bread today. In the name of Jesus, it's coming to me now. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, it's coming. I believe you're receiving something big today. It's coming to you, so receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. And even as we go into today's broadcast, precious Lord, thank you for your spirit that will guide us into all truth. Thank you for the spirit of revelation and the honor that we put in your word brings forth the manifestations in our lives. I declare right now, burdens are lifted, yokes are destroyed in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Woo! You know, we are talking of who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? I don't want you to see Jesus through the eyes of any man. And that's why my prayer in this season is that you will begin to receive encounters. There are things, <laughs> there, are, there are many good preachers, many good preachers, many who have seen, who have tested, who have walked with God. But you see, we get to keep learning every day. Because even, even me, I keep finding out that, you know, even though the Holy Ghost is the one teaching you many things, there is still the room for assumptions that we put inside. So the Lord tells you something and says, oh, oh, okay, I see, I see. That, that means, and then like, you think that's it. And then you grow some more. The Holy Ghost comes and is teaching you. Then you look back at that thing. They say, but, but, but you taught me this before. And he says, no, that's not what I told you. Then you will see what he told you. And then you will see where you filled in the gap with your own assumptions. And it is your assumptions that is usually wrong. And I understand because most times our assumptions have to do with our experience in life. What we have heard growing up, what we have experienced. So we just put in that, fill in the blank with our own assumptions. That is quite limited. So, but when we, when we come to Christ, remember he said in 2 he said in, in second Corinthians chapter 3, he says, when we come to Christ, the veil is taken away. That veil is taken away. Brothers and sisters, it pays to dwell in Christ. It pays to know Jesus for who he is. That's what Paul was seeking. I was reading that to you yesterday in Philippians chapter 3. It says that I might know him. I want to know him. I want to know him. Yes. But then be careful when you now begin to say, I want to know the power of his resurrection. I said there's a truth to it. You know, but then you can know him and the power of life that is living. The life in itself is the resurrected life. Or rather, the very essence of life. Because when you put resurrection life, automatically you're moving your mind towards death. But you can just go, the life, the power of an everlasting life. Hallelujah. The power of an everlasting life. It is that power that raised Jesus from the dead. But, but you see, it doesn't have to raise you from the dead. Why? Because you don't have to die. Now, it is the ministry of Jesus. That is where he has gone in to the Holy of Holies so that he can minister these things to us. But how many of us are receiving that ministry from him? Many of us are still receiving a ministry from the outer courts. We dwell in the outer courts. We want to be able to relate with men. We want to be able to make men understand us. 
want to be able to, do you understand? Come in, come in, come in some more. Come in some more. Boldly go into the Holy of Holies with him. Where you begin to hear things that it's, it's so difficult to even share amongst men. Oh yes, I'm telling you the truth. Paul spoke of an experience. He said, the things that I heard, they are not things I can share with you. So why would God give you things that you cannot share with me? You see, because we have reasoned that we are, you know, for example, as a preacher, you just feel anything God is telling you so that you will preach it. Everything God is telling you so that you preach it. No, he, you are first called to him. So many times you find preachers who receive revelations from the Lord, they don't sit down, analyze and understand that revelation for themselves to leave it out. They are just in a hurry to go tell this new thing that they have heard and learned. But that's not so. He's called you to be his minister. He's called you to fellowship with him. It is from the abundance of that fellowship and testimonies see because that fellowship will produce testimony and because you believe that testimony you will not keep quiet you will share that testimony then with proofs book of john let me show you something chapter 14 thank you lord jesus verse 19 John 14 and verse 19, Jesus speaking here, he says, A little while longer and the world will see me no more. I want you to follow this. A little while longer and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. Wow. <laughs> you know, and they were with Jesus and, and going everywhere with Jesus, preaching everywhere with Jesus. And suddenly, because they see people share their testimony, Jesus heals a lot of people. They share their testimonies. And then Jesus now said, hey, in a little while, the world will not see me again. Okay. But you will see me. Now, this was what inspired. Let, let me read this. Hmm. Oh, Liberande ke sabra kashabdiya. And 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 look at this now. He says, "Let me just read it again." A little while longer, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live. You will live also. And at that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me. And I in you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me show you something. He. Watch this. Verse 22. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Judas understood perfectly what Jesus was talking about. And so I call this the most intelligent question asked in the Bible. Because Jesus just told them that, look, in a little while, the world will not see me again. But you will see me. So how is that going to happen? Speaking as men, how is that going to happen? And he said, excuse me, sir. How are you going to manifest yourself to us? And the world will not see. And look at the explanation Jesus gave. Verse 23. Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my words. I'm going to explain this to you in a moment. And my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. Wow. So Jesus said, this is how it works. 
Anyone who loves me will keep my words. Now, for you to keep his word, you must first of all receive his word, right? Meaning, those who love God, God will demonstrate his love to them by giving them his word. And when they receive his word, they keep it. Oh, maybe sometime in the new year, I'm going to share with you on how to keep his word. It's not what you think. Most, mostly it's not what you think. I'm going to teach you. I pray the Spirit of God will help us. I'll teach you how to keep his word. And then he says, when you keep my word, my father, who is the real giver of the word, will love him. And we, notice he says, we will come to him and make our home with him. But the one who doesn't love me, no word for him. So, so, what was Jesus saying? Combine this to what he said before, in a little while the world will not see me. You know, I've shared this earlier with you. Man. I was fellowshiping with the Lord one time. And I asked him, I said, Lord, I think you lost a big opportunity to win the whole world. He said, why do you say so? I said, yeah. When Jesus rose from the dead, come on now. Uh, number one, I think Jesus should have rather come in the days of CNN and, and all internet and cable so the whole world can see this thing from one point. And number two, when, when Jesus rose from the dead, I, I'm telling you, if I was the one, I would love to go to Pilate first and then the chief, high, the chief priest or the high priest and all those Pharisees that were behind my death and crucifixion. And those soldiers that took it personal and they were flogging me like anything. I'll just appear to them and say, Guy, how are you? So yesterday or two, a few days ago, you were flogging me like there was no tomorrow. <laughs> how about now? I would appear before the high priest and say, Hey, priest, do. Servant of the living God. <laughs> and look at the nail hole. <laughs> And show up in Pilate and say, hey, Pilate, I know that you try to wash your hands clean. But maybe you should have done some, some, you should have done some more. Then you should have gathered the whole of Israel to one place, maybe to one mountain. The day he was to resurrect, oh boy, CNN should have been there. All the news agency should have been there with all their cameras. So that he will give his last press conference. And while giving that press conference, he, they just see him lift up and then he starts going, boy, the whole world, that will be a testimony that nobody can refute. I was, I'm, I was telling the Lord these things, praise God. And then the Lord said to me, he said, listen, there was no way they were going to see me. You see this God that he can bust your bubble. <laughs> I'm telling the truth. I mean, when you're, when you're giving him wonderful ideas, just throw something at you like, oh, 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 crazy. Yeah, he said, so, so. I didn't appear to them because they couldn't see me. I said, how? What well, the disciples saw, you say, yeah. And then he said something to me. Only those who can receive my word could see me. Because when he rose from the dead, hear me, he didn't rise the same Jesus that died. Oh, my time is up. <laughs> I'll continue from here tomorrow. Father, I pray that you open our eyes. Our eyes are so little, our hearts so dull. That because it has not been taught perfect truth. But Lord, you are changing that today and bringing your truth into our hearts. And we have quick understanding by your Spirit. 
even as we understand these things. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.